In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to become affected by low vibrations. These can weigh heavily on your mind, body and spirit. Drawing upon ancient wisdom, spiritual teachings and modern insights, let's uncover the power within to protect yourself from negative influences and increase the vibration of your energy. But before we learn the ancient tactics for protecting your energy, we need to understand some concepts. What is actually energy and vibrations? Chapter 1. Energy and Vibrations Everything in the universe, from the largest galaxy to the smallest molecule, our thoughts, emotions and physical bodies, is composed of subatomic particles. These are protons, electrons and neutrons, which are in a state of constant movement, all thanks to energy. Thus, energy is the basis of even the most microscopic and invisible processes in our bodies and our reality. Just like Albert Einstein once said, energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be changed from one form to another. Since these subatomic particles are in constant movement, so is energy constantly moving, generating vibrations. The number of times our energy moves and the power with which it does is what determines the quality of these vibrations measured in hearts. Vibrations can be either high or low or something in between. Both high and low vibrations have their good and bad as we'll discover later on, but before we get there, let's learn more about how each of them works. When we are in a state of joy, love and gratitude, our energy vibrates at a high frequency, attracting positivity and abundance into our lives. High energy illuminates the world around us with hope and kindness. On the other hand, low vibrations are characterized by feelings of negativity, fear, doubt and despair. They can be generated by external sources such as toxic environments, negative people or challenging life circumstances. On top of that, our thoughts and emotions can also contribute to low vibrations if they are rooted in fear, self-doubt or limiting beliefs. When your high vibrations come in contact with either external or internal low vibrations, they decrease in quality, almost like a dimming flame struggling to stay alight amidst the darkness. Low vibrations cloud you from life's positivity. If you don't know how to protect your energy from low vibrations, it can cause you a downward spiral, preventing you from breaking free from the cycle of negativity. Physically, low vibrations can manifest as fatigue, lethargy and stress-related ailments such as headaches, digestive issues and muscle tension. Long-term exposure to low vibrations can even cause more chronic mood-related, but their harmful effects don't stay there as they also affect our mood. Emotionally, low vibrations can wreak havoc on our mental health, leading to feelings of anxiety, depression and despair. This is why we say low vibrations are an energy drain. They make it much harder to find fulfillment in our lives. Last but not least, they hurt us even spiritually. Low vibrations can disconnect us from our higher selves and the divine. When our energy is weighed down by negativity, it's harder for us to access our inner wisdom. We may feel spiritually depleted, lost or disconnected from our purpose and inner guidance. This is better explained by Hinduism with a concept known as karma. This emphasizes the balance of energies through the law of cause and effect. According to this belief, every action we take has consequences and these consequences contribute to the overall balance of our energy. By acting with kindness and compassion, we generate positive karma which helps to elevate our vibrations. Conversely, negative actions create negative karma, leading to lower vibrations. So that must mean that you only need to keep thinking and acting positively and try to avoid negativity as much as you can, correct? Yes, but that's easier said than done because low vibrations are more common than ever in the present day. They can be found in the social media we obsess with, or we might be living with them in the form of a toxic relationship with our family members or friends or ourselves. But here's the crucial point. You have the power to protect yourself from low vibrations and raise your energetic frequency even when yours is at its lowest. All it takes is becoming aware of the sources of low vibrations in your life and using ancient strategies to shield yourself. With them, you can reclaim your energy, vitality 
and inner peace. So, time to get working. Let's learn how low vibrations can manifest in our lives. First, in our environments. Any environment that's dominated by conflict, hostility or negativity emits low vibrations like a factory emits toxic waste. This includes places where there is constant stress, tension or emotional turmoil. But even more insidious are low vibrations generated by negative media, such as news stories focused on violence. Similarly, engaging in entertainment that glorifies violence, promotes hate speech or perpetuates harmful stereotypes can contribute to low vibrational energy. So, how do you protect yourself from these? Stay tuned as we uncover powerful strategies to shield your energy and elevate your vibrational frequency. The first of these is the power of strong boundaries, our first line of defense against low vibrations. Chapter 2 Setting Strong Boundaries Plato, the renowned Greek philosopher, spoke of the importance of knowing oneself and maintaining inner harmony. He believed that by understanding our strengths and weaknesses, we can interact with others from a place of authenticity and integrity. Centuries later, Seneca, the Stoic philosopher of ancient Rome, advocated for cultivating emotional resilience and discernment in our interactions with others. He famously said, Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body, highlighting the importance of maintaining inner strength and clarity amidst external challenges. Seneca's teachings remind us that by setting clear boundaries and staying true to our principles, we can protect our energy and maintain our emotional well-being. Start by identifying your own needs and limits, then clearly communicate them to others. This may mean saying no to requests that don't align with your priorities or values or establishing guidelines for how you expect to be treated in relationships. You'll need to have honest conversations with loved ones about your needs and expectations. Let them know what behaviors are acceptable to you and what crosses the line and be firm in enforcing those boundaries if they are violated. Similarly, in professional settings, it's crucial to establish boundaries with colleagues and supervisors to protect your time and energy. This could mean setting limits on how often you check your email outside of work hours or communicating your availability for meetings and projects. Remember that setting boundaries is not about being selfish or closed off, it's about taking care of yourself so that you can show up as your best self in all areas of your life. Lao Tzu, the ancient Chinese philosopher and author of the Tao Te Ching, spoke of the importance of flowing like water when interacting with others. He emphasized the value of non-resistance and non-attachment in our interpersonal relationships, allowing us to maintain inner peace while setting healthy boundaries. Now let's turn our attention to a particularly challenging aspect of setting boundaries, family. Establishing boundaries with family members is always harder due to the deep emotional ties and expectations that often accompany these connections. Shared history and uncertain power dynamics make asserting your needs harder without causing family members to complain, which in turn generates low vibrations. This low vibration causes the fear of rejection or judgment from family members, which can further complicate the process of boundary setting, a vicious cycle where you end up suppressing your own needs and emotions to maintain familial harmony. This keeps you in a perpetually low vibration as you need to forgo your needs to maintain a semblance of peace. To navigate these, let's take a look at ancient philosophies, African cultures emphasize the concept of Ubuntu, which means I am because we are. Ubuntu underscores the interconnectedness of individuals within the family unit with clear and defined roles. It teaches us to choose a time and place to have open and honest conversations with our family members about boundaries. The best strategy is to use I statements to express your feelings and needs without placing blame or criticism. Be specific about the boundaries you are setting and the consequences for crossing them. Maintain consistency in enforcing your boundaries to demonstrate their importance. But what about energetical boundaries? Just as we have physical boundaries to protect our personal space, we also need to safeguard ourselves from external influences. 
To do this, visualize yourself surrounded by a bubble of protective light, or imagine yourself enveloped in a cloak of positive energy that repels negativity and shields you from harm. Next, you should surround yourself with positive influences and uplifting environments, people who uplift and inspire you, who celebrate your goals and engage in activities that bring you joy. There's an advanced trick used by spiritual advisors that can both protect and recharge your energy at home. Master it, and you'll be able to recharge whenever you're at home, no matter the environment. It's called the Sacred Space. Chapter 3 create sacred spaces to create an energetically charged sacred space first select a quiet area in your home where you can create it this could be a corner of a room a cozy nook or even an entire room dedicated to your energy make sure this is a place no one but you can access freely so if you live with other people ensure it's one they cannot contaminate with their energies clear the space of any clutter or distractions Remove unnecessary items and clean the area to create a sense of freshness and renewal. Make sure your sacred space is comfortable and inviting. Include cushions, blankets, or a comfortable chair where you can sit and relax without distractions. Burn incense, sage, or essential oils to purify the air and create a peaceful atmosphere. Play soft music or nature sounds to deepen your relaxation and meditation practice. Finally, honor and respect your sacred space as a sacred sanctuary for your spiritual practice and self-care. Spend time in your space regularly, nurturing your mind, body and soul, and allowing yourself to retreat and recharge as needed. The one thing you need to do in your space to fully leverage its high vibration is called mindfulness meditation, a Buddhist concept. By quieting the mind and cultivating awareness of the present moment, we can transcend the fluctuations of the ego and connect with our higher selves, which are inherently pure and radiant, while also detaching ourselves from negative thoughts and emotions. Mindfulness allows us to observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment, enabling us to release negativity and restore balance to our energy field. After doing all of this, you'll be protected from all external low vibrations, but what can you do about low vibrations coming from within you? It's time to break free from your inner negativity too. Chapter 4. Breaking Free from Negativity Break free from recurring negative thoughts by spotting them when they appear. Slowly develop an awareness of how people's actions cause you to think negatively or how life's events change your mindset into a scarcity mindset. The best place to start doing this is in your sacred space through the mindfulness meditation technique. This will help you carefully become more aware of what negative thoughts appear in your mind. Then, time to step up the difficulty. Instead of doing it at home, do it throughout the day. This requires a willingness to observe our thoughts without judgment and to notice the impact they have on our emotions and behaviors. Slowly, become more mindful of your thought patterns to spot whenever you slip into negativity. A philosopher who profoundly speaks to this approach of overcoming negativity through mindfulness and self-awareness is Marcus Aurelius. As a Stoic philosopher, Aurelius emphasized the importance of inner peace and the control we have over our reactions to external circumstances. In his meditations, Aurelius writes, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This stoic principle aligns perfectly with the concept of breaking free from negativity by monitoring and adjusting our thought processes. Aurelius believed in the practice of examining one's thoughts and behaviors critically but without harshness, to understand where they stem from and how they can be redirected towards more constructive ends. He advocated for a kind of mindfulness that involves daily reflection, not only in solitude, but amidst the chaos of life. According to Aurelius, it's in the midst of action and interaction that we truly test and apply our ability to remain undisturbed by negative thoughts and external events. Chapter 5. Positive Reframes of Reality Once we've identified negative thoughts, what can you do to dismantle them and shake off their influence in your vibrations? Challenge them with positive affirmations and mental reframes. 
These are statements that affirm our worth, value and potential, helping to counteract the negative self-talk that often accompanies negative thinking. This is a slow process, as just as negative thought patterns develop over time, so too does the process of rewiring our brains for positivity. Be patient with yourself as you work to cultivate a more positive mindset and celebrate small victories along the way. By cultivating a more positive mindset, we not only improve our well-being but also create a ripple effect of positivity that can positively impact those around us, increasing the quality of our high vibrations. As we become more mindful of our thoughts and emotions, we can choose to respond to challenges with grace, compassion and resilience, inspiring others to do the same. But even after applying tactics correctly, there's the issue of energetic stability. It's useful to know how to reach high vibrations and protect yourself from low vibrations, but how can you maintain your vibrations stable with all the chaos we have in our lives? Through another ancient technique, grounding. This mindfulness technique involves taking some time out of your day to walk barefoot on the earth. It can be a couple of minutes or several hours. Chapter 6. Grounding. When you make direct contact with the ground, whether it's soil, grass, sand or even concrete, you allow the Earth's natural energy to flow through you, replenishing and stabilizing your energy field. This practice can help you feel more centered, grounded and connected to the world around you. Another grounding technique is to spend time in nature. Whether you're hiking through the woods, sitting by a river, or simply spending time in your backyard, being surrounded by nature's beauty can have a powerful grounding effect. Take a moment to breathe in the fresh air, listen to the sounds of the birds, and feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. Allow yourself to be fully present in the moment and soak in the healing energy of the natural world. This is one of the better ways to increase your vibrations, but what if you don't have easy access to nature? Well, turns out that the mind is our most powerful tool for energy protection, and you can even practice grounding with visualization techniques. Close your eyes and imagine roots extending from the soles of your feet deep into the earth, anchoring you firmly to the ground below. Visualize these roots absorbing any negative or excess energy from your body, allowing you to release it back into the earth for transformation. Now, it's time to reveal one of the most secret energetical protection techniques. But before that, we need to learn about the vibrational spectrum. Contrary to popular belief, every vibration has its purpose in our lives, even low ones. This is more complex to understand, so listen carefully. Chapter 7. Vibrational Spectrum Both high and low vibrations exist on a spectrum rather than as fixed points. Instead of aiming for a never-ending high vibration, you should aim to move towards higher frequencies while balancing out the lower ones. It's impossible to go through life without ever vibrating low, and sometimes life situations put us in contexts where we need to interact with low vibrations, whether we want it or not. There's also the consequence of vibrating too high, a danger that even expert spiritual advisors forget exists. The ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius was so aware of the necessary balance between vibrations that he proposed the concept of harmony. He believed that achieving a healthy combination of different energies, including low and high vibrations, was essential for overall well-being and moral integrity. This is where chakras come in, an important concept to master your energies no matter the situation. Three important chakras intervene in our vibration wavelength, the root chakra, the heart chakra, and the crown chakra. Let's take a look at each. Chapter 8. Chakras. The root chakra, associated with survival instincts and material needs, resonates with the lowest vibrations, but what people forget about it is that it serves as the building block for all other chakras. It provides the foundation for our existence, enabling us to build civilizations and meet our basic needs. Problems begin with excessive focus on the root chakra, which can lead to materialism, greed, and a lack of spiritual connection. Next up the ladder is the heart chakra, which emits high vibrations associated with unconditional love, compassion, and empathy. This vibrational frequency fosters harmonious relationships, emotional well-being, and spiritual growth. 
By opening our hearts, we can cultivate a deeper connection with ourselves and others, transcending ego-driven desires. At the highest level are the third eye and crown chakras, which represent the highest possible vibrations. These are associated with intuition, spiritual awareness and enlightenment. While accessing these realms can be transformative, it also comes with risks. Opening these chakras prematurely or without proper guidance can lead to psychic disturbances such as hallucinations or spiritual confusion. Therefore, understanding which vibration is needed at any given time is crucial for maintaining balance and harmony within ourselves. If someone finds themselves overly focused on material possessions and earthly desires, they'll emit low vibrations and slowly suffer from the consequences of negativity. Conversely, if someone is too overly focused on spirituality to the point they forget to live in the present mindfully, they'll also suffer from vibrating too high. Those struggling with insecurity or instability may need to strengthen their connection to the root chakra to feel grounded and secure. This is the hardest concept to grasp, but once you achieve it, you'll never again feel the consequences of low vibrations in your life. Finally, take steps to replenish and increase your physical energy too. Chapter 9. Replenish your energy levels. Hydration is essential for maintaining high vibrational energy levels. Water not only helps to flush out toxins from the body, but also supports optimal cellular function and overall vitality. Equally as important is quality sleep, so your body can repair and rejuvenate itself. Aim for seven to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep each night and create a relaxing bedtime routine to promote restful sleep. Limit processed foods, refined sugars, and excessive caffeine, as these can drain your energy and lead to fluctuations in mood and energy levels. Remember to always prioritize your energy, for the quality of energy you accept in your life is what will determine its course the most. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.